All right, let's get weird. Um, let's look at the principle of sufficient reason. Um, this is a principle that applies in ontology, which is just this, the study of stuff, uh, what kinds of things exist and how they exist. And the principle of sufficient reason says everything that exists was caused to exist. Um, it might not exist for a purpose uh, or an intention, but we know that the things that exist exist as they do because something caused them to exist, even if we don't know what that uh, cause was. Now, to understand how the principle of sufficient reason is going to get us to a claim about God, we want to understand these concepts of necessary and contingent, okay? And an easy way to understand necessary and contingent is to think about statements, okay? There are some statements that are logically necessary, and all we mean by that is these statements can't be false. They have to be true. Logically necessary statements have to be true, either by definition, like triangles have three sides, or by tautology, either it's snowing or it's not snowing outside. So you can look at these statements and you can think to yourself, there's no way for these statements to be um, false. They are by necessity true. On the other hand, there's another kind of statement called logically contingent statements. And whether or not those statements are true or false kind of depends on the way that things are when the sentences or when the statements are offered. So if I say to you something like, we're in a classroom at CR right now, false. Maybe tomorrow it'll be true when I say it, because we'll, we'll meet up there to, to go over some work. Um, but right now, no. False. Um, water boils at two, 212 degrees right now, for me, on the coast, true. If you take me backpacking uh, up to 10,000 feet, then the statement becomes false. So we have these statements that are true or false depending on the way that reality is structured at the moment we're offering these statements. And then there's statements that are logically impossible. No way for these statements to be true, okay? A circle has four corners is never going to be a true statement because that, by definition, wouldn't be a circle. Uh, it, can't, it can't be the case that it's neither snowing nor not snowing. It's got to be one or the other, okay? So you have logically necessary statements that can't be false, logically impossible statements that can't be true, and then logically contingent statements, which may, they can be true, they can be false. It kind of depends on the way that things are. Now take this, th these qualities of uh, necessary and contingent and now apply them to stuff, okay? So we're gonna take the same properties of necessary and contingent, and we're gonna apply them to stuff. And when we apply them to stuff, we're gonna we're gonna characterize things as either ontologically necessary, ontologically contingent, or ontologically impossible. And again, all we mean by ontologically is stuff exists. All right, so something that's ontologically impossible is something that can't exist, okay? You're never gonna find a five-sided square. Go look for it all you want, you'll never find it, because that kind of thing cannot exist, okay? There are, on the other hand, things that are ontologically contingent. Doesn't have to exist, maybe it does. You're a good example of something that's ontologically contingent, because you exist, but you don't have to by logical necessity exist. I can imagine a scenario um, in which your parents chose a sequence of events that led to something other than you. Can't you? Okay, so the fact that you do exist doesn't mean you exist by necessity. It just means that you existed but didn't have to, okay? Same is true for leprechauns. There's nothing impossible about there being leprechauns. I can imagine a world where leprechauns exist. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing about leprechauns that's like a five-sided square, okay? So just because leprechauns don't exist doesn't mean that they couldn't. Now, the question for you is, is there anything that has to exist? It cannot not exist. Can you think of anything that would be ontologically necessary? It would be impossible for this thing to not exist. All right, so this takes us to our ontological argument about God, and there's some questions here. Is it possible for God to be a contingent being? Now remember, contingent means it doesn't have to exist. Its existence depends on something else, like my existence depended on my parents. So I'm a contingent being. My, my existence depends on something outside myself. Is it possible for God to be a contingent being? Is it possible that God eh, could have existed, may not have existed, doesn't have to exist? It ex its existence depended on something creating it. And we'd have to say, well, no. It would be impossible for God to be a contingent being because if it's true that God is the ultimate uh, supernatural singular source of all things, then that thing couldn't be dependent on something else for its existence because then that thing 
would be actually God, right? So if God is the supreme being, God can't, by definition, have its existence depend on something else because that something else would then be the supreme being. So we've eliminated the possibility here, says some philosophers, that God could be a contingent being. God is we're defining God, okay? So that leads us with two other options. That means that God is either necessary or impossible, okay? And so we've phrased this as, again, one of these either-or questions. God is either ontologically necessary and can't not exist, or God is ontologically impossible and couldn't exist. The rule of disjunction says that if you eliminate one of these two possibilities in this statement right here, then by definition, the other remaining option that wasn't eliminated would have to be true. Okay, that's what the rule says. So the question for us is, is God ontologically necessary or ontologically impossible? Can you eliminate one of those? And I'm going to suggest to you that I can eliminate the possibility that God is ontologically impossible. That's not true. There's, there's nothing impossible like a five, like a five-sided square or a, a round rectangle. There's nothing impossible about God existing. And if that's the case, then God is ontologically necessary because that's the only option left, which means God cannot not exist where God exists. Okay. So this is how this argument is rolling and it has to do with a quality of existence. And we'll explore that more because I know this is sort of confusing. You're like, what is going on here? Okay. But there's sort of this, it's not a trick, but there's this sequence of logical deductions that has taken place based on the assumption that everything that exists was caused to exist. And then following that sequence um, to this conclusion, that God is a logically necessary thing and has to exist, cannot not exist.